Oh, Mr. Mac's gone. Mr. Mr. I didn't know Mr. Brassington was in. Mr. It's not been in here, not for days. Well, his car was parked near the bagging off plant. Angela. Oh, Neil. This new fellow you've got on the work sweep was no better than that bloody idiot I told you to get rid of. Have you see what he's done to the side of it? Not to mention whatever it was he scraped it on. It's the same man. I thought I told you to find him a useful job or get rid. Well, uh, I left it with Max. Well, if you hit somebody, the union will be down on us for employing a dangerous driver. I'll have a word with Max. I've not gone yet, you know. I've still got two weeks to run, and what I say still goes. Get rid. Well, if you say so, of course. I yeah. do say so. Oh. Missing me, Angela. Every day. <laughs> she means it, you know. <laughs> These lads behaving themselves. More or less. You got any trouble with them, let me know. <laughs> oh, Neil, I've asked Dorothy to run Mother up to the house tonight. But her car's out of action. Well, she said she would, so she must intend using yours. Mm. Yeah, I thought that would please you. Well, you're insured. I'm a 65% no-claims bonus. The company pays it. Well, yes, but even so. I used to think like you, and I regret it. When I see what thanks you get for it, I do. You then, didn't I? Look, it's no business of yours if I want me windows clean. And when I finish them, I shall do kitchen and all. Might as well be young for sheep as a lamb, eh? Oh, you've got to get me young, are you? You'd be drawn and quartered as well if you're in here. You were up ladders. Well, better to risk falling off a ladder than if that to be my fate. You fallen from grace yet? <laughs> Your Ruth tells me you put up for election at the works. Ah. Oh. Election for works committee. They don't count votes till tomorrow. Your last stood against you, she says. Ah, it did. Pains you, does it? Way of things today. You wouldn't have stood against your own father, would you? There'd have been no point. We were as one when it came to politics, Dad and me. Issues were clear-cut in them days. They fight for the sake of fighting these days, Mabel, not for the prize. Henry's packing in at the end of the month. Ah, oh, told me. I see him in the Black Line most nights. Getting himself talked about again, is he? Jesse? Nay. He's just liking a being a lad again in his mind. We all do that, don't we? Keeps us in fettle. I may have said this to you before. There's no fool like an old fool. Ah, oh, well, sounds familiar. Well, it's daft enough. To what? To think it can start again. Ah. I suppose my bloody ears should be burning, shouldn't they? 
You can do with your mouth washing out to cool your tongue. I can see you've been up ladders again. I waste my breath on you. Hey, no, lad. Uh, it was me. She asked me to wipe windows for it. Did she ask you to tell a lie for her as well? Didn't cost you a pint that well. I'll be in the black line in ten minutes. You got me in bother again. You two mates again? Ah, we've taken having a pint together now and then. Now you're not master and man. Master and man? Oh, I haven't heard that for years. <laughs> and yet... I behaved in that tradition not half an hour ago when somebody riled me. <laughs> I've heard it belongs to another century. Like me, you mean? You. You've lived through more than anybody else has ever done and will again. You'll live forever. If I don't fall off a ladder, you mean? You'll be beholden to nobody, will you? Well, what would you have me do? Sit in a chair all day waiting for the reaper? Reaper? <laughs> you don't go to church these days, not since you came back down here. Notice that, have you? Yeah, God got nothing for you, has he? I took against the new vicar. <laughs> I've never known you. One that you didn't take against. <laughs> uh, didn't stop you going before, if only to plague him. What are you asking me? Asking me? Look, ask a straight question if you want a straight answer, but don't go all round the houses. You came to ask me something, didn't you? Now, what makes you think that? Well, for a whole week you've been. You've sat down, you've stood up, you've picked things up, you've put them down, you've ummed and you've hard about nothing at all, and then you've gone on your way. What is it you want of me, lad? I don't know. And yet you, you're right in a way. I don't think I can stand it much longer. But I don't know what it is. No, that doesn't make sense, does it? Well, you've had a lot to put up with these last few weeks. Uh, I put up with a lot worse in my life, apart from losing Jean. It's not that I've grown faced up to that. It's it's something to do with everything. That's the nearest I can get. Something to do with everything. It's too late, you know. For what? For what you're thinking. And what might that be? <laughs> you can read you like a book. I always knew when you were going to get up to mischief. Good heavens, we are coming on, aren't we? Changing for dinner. No, I'll just off it out for a bit. I'll have that later. Be here straight on top of food. It doesn't suit me. Where do you suggest I put it? You know, I like it from the oven. I always like warmed up dinners. Thanks. Eh? <sighs> Never mind. It's habit, you see. Your mother never knew when to expect me when I'd be doing overtime. If it was going, you to grab. You like what you're used to, don't you? First part of my life, I was used to warmed up dinners. You like what you're used to. That's an observation on human nature, is it? Happen. I'll pass it on to the oven. You've been spoiled by the lodger. I like it all, me, so never felt need to say so. I suppose you want compliments after every meal like he used to dish up. Oh, for the short time that he was here, it was nice. Missing? Good heavens, no. Why should I? I like my privacy. Oh, it's just the compliments you miss, is it? Ah, he's only been gone a month. You'll mm. get used to it. Did you ever see him? Well, I've uh, seen him a time or two at the works. He's friendly with our lasers, you know. Huh. Well, that's more than can be said for you at the present time, I suppose. They voted today, didn't they? Counting tomorrow. But you're celebrating today. I never count my chickens. You're chirpy enough. Can you see our has been chosen instead of me? No, I can't. But then I know nothing about it, according to you. So why'd you ask me? Well, there was a telephone call for him. After you left for school this morning, by the way. Who's this? McKellar. Ian, your lodger that was. His daughter, she said. I told her he'd left. She asked if he was on the phone there. I said I couldn't tell her. I'd said you'd be able to tell her if she rang up tonight. No, uh, Ross is coming round. I'm going out. Well, she'll be unlucky then, won't she? I hope it is not important. Well, it's not your concern, is it? Is it?
lovely evening out there. How did you go for a walk, hmm? I was going to when this is finished. I think there's someone coming on I want to watch. Guy, would you mind switching that thing off? I have work to do. What's wrong with your story? It's all right, Mum. I was going out for a walk anyway. Why does he have to watch that damn racket anyway? Watch, listen, the vision's as bad as the sound. What his generation likes. Damn commercial rubbish. Your father was here last night. Last night? Hmm, he came just before you and Ross got back from wherever it was you went. I think he wanted to see you. You said so? No, but that's the impression I got. Uh, I'll try and pop over to the house tomorrow. Ross wants it, by the way. Your father's house? Yes, Dad told him last week he was looking for something smaller. So he should, too. It's a damn cavern of a place for one man to live in. But Ross is only one man. Not for much longer, apparently. Ruth, they're married. For God's sake, don't tell anyone. Oh, Max, who would I tell? Well, Dot, for instance. <laughs> it travel around Ledston faster than Concord. <laughs> anyway, I don't think it's completely settled yet. Does Henry know Ross wants his house? No, Ross doesn't want to rush anything. And we don't know yet that Dad's going to take the job with Ross that the parent company want him to. It's a big house, even for two, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'm not sure that Ross can afford it. Not that Dad would expect him to pay the market value, of course, but there are the running costs. I'd better get on with this one. I'll see if I can catch up with Guy. I feel like a walk. It's a shame you have to stay in. Yes. We used to walk a lot before of us. I suppose you're happier now he's back home, are you? Oh, you know I am. And he's grateful. Grateful? To you for understanding. His gratitude's misplaced where I do understand. I don't agree. Not that he's interested in my point of view. Why don't you talk to him, Max? He's a very intelligent boy. <laughs> what makes you think that intelligence leads to understanding? Why did you let him stay at home, then? I came up against a brick wall, didn't I? I thought getting through brick walls was a speciality of yours. Getting through brick walls can make a hell of a mess. Besides... You were unhappy. So you agreed to make me happy, is that what you're saying? Partly. And if it doesn't work out for Guy, then I'm responsible, is that it? That wasn't what I said. Is he in? Yes, he's in. Oh, lovely evening. Mm, I'm just off for a walk with Guy. Oh, uh, how's Guy settling in at the Comprehensive? He likes it, but then it would have to be pretty grim for him not to, wouldn't it? Hi. <laughs> Hi, uh, Ross told me that he'd had a word with Ruth about him. She reckons he'll be all right. It seems the, uh, the bright ones get all the attention. But does she approve of that? Well, no, not really. She says that's why people call it a bad school. What they really mean is it's a bad Comprehensive. <laughs> You know, you're looking different somehow. Am I? Hmm. You're more relaxed, happier. I expect he's having Guy back, eh? <laughs> yes, I expect it is. I, I wish I could find a solution. Like you have, like Ross has. What's Ross's solution? Well, he's about to relive his youth, isn't he? He's about to try, maybe. Oh, I better go. I'll never catch up with Guy. All right. Uh, in here. Oh, I tried to get you earlier in the office, but you'd uh, just left. Drink? Oh, oh, no, no, thanks. I have to drive Dot and your grandmother up to your father's house shortly. Well, it's either that or let Dot drive my car. <laughs> Painful alternative. Oh, uh, he came into the office. Dad, I didn't mm. see him. Oh, he parked near the bagging plant. What do you want, did you say? No, but he came in fuming. Ranker, the uh, bloke who drives the sweeper, Seems he uh, scraped it down the side of something. He wanted to know why we hadn't taken him off it. What did you say? Well, I passed the book, I'm afraid. I said I'd left it with you. No, no, that's fair enough. You did. Well, I said I'd like to have a word with you, but uh, he said he was in charge for another two weeks and uh, to get rid of Rankert. I see. Well, I thought he'd like to know right away because uh, the last time I uh, spoke to Rankert, you remember, he tried to give me the impression that you... Well, he was under some kind of special protection for me. Hmm? Well, I... Maybe I should have told you in the first place. It's just that at the time, it seemed the fewer people who knew, the better. He's a kind of industrial intelligence agent. Intelligence? The parent company brought him in, claiming that we were about to have a plant in the works. Plant? A political plant from an activist group. He's already here, it seems. 
Rancott's taped conversations he's had with one of the local lads. Oh, God. Yeah, that was my first reaction. I, I don't think I want to tell you anymore. It's a bit unsavoury, isn't it? I thought so at first, but Summers convinced me that we're only using the kind of tactics that they use. I think he's probably right. <laughs> Do two wrongs make a right? No, what's the alternative? What's the alternative, Neil? Somebody beat you to it tonight. Ah, to what? You weren't first in. Time on your hands? No one makes you think so. I've been able to count on you coming through that door five minutes after I've opened it these days. Well, are you complaining? Well, I've usually been able to count in the first half hour or so to get one or two jobs in. You get the odd early bird, of course, but I usually serve them and leave them. There's a bell there when they want me. Well, don't make any exception on my behalf. You know, go and get your jobs done if you must. I'll wait till Jim comes. I'll only have to come back. How do you manage without a man? I usually get that sort of question later in the evening. Huh? I'm meant with respect to your work, you daft heaper. You can tell me about Tubbard if you like, though. Well. Now, I've got a chap comes and helps me in the cellar when I need. You looking for a job? I'm looking for something, Jess. I owe him a pint, or so he reckons. Does he, or doesn't he? Aye, I'll have it off him. He can afford it. He's a working man. Give him a pint. Give a pint in the pump. Oh, thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. And I want no fighting in here while my back's turned. <laughs> She's not that far off the truth, is she? We were near it a time or two in the past, weren't we? Uh, politics, that's all. That's all, he says. We were the lads. They were different times. Hi. Hi. I know anything about gardening. Only what I picked up from watching Mum. Seen you before, haven't I? I usually come this way. My name is McCullough. Ian. Guy Brassington. Uh, from the house up the hill there. Mm-hmm. Uh, your mother gave me a lift one day when I first came here. I uh, work for Leadstone Cement. Oh, my father works there. Yes, I know. If you could just tell me which are flowers and which are weeds, that would help. <laughs> I can tell you that much, I think. Well. Now that we're here, maybe he'll tell me what it's all about. Dad asked us to bring you. It's a surprise. Oh, it's a surprise, is it? Well, go on then. Surprise me. He wants you to choose something. Anything you like from the house before he sells it. I see. Why couldn't he tell me himself? He said you wouldn't come. Wouldn't want anything. Oh, he was right. I mean, what do I want with things at my age? Well, he wanted you to have first choice. Well, of all I need. I suppose he thinks I'll take that clock. He knows I've always had anchoring for that clock. But he's attached to that clock himself, you know. He said everything but the clock, I dare say. Anything you like, he said. Oh, oh I'll take the clock. <laughs> Not that it goes proper. It was running on tea cakes on the day of your mother's funeral. Have a look round. See if there's anything else you'd like. Oh, I can have more than one, then. Oh, I think you can have the lot as far as he's concerned. It was wrong, you know, your dad. About me not wanting anything. I'm a gannet. I don't like admitting to it, but I am. I'll take anything that's going. I don't know why I'm a gannet, but I am. You'd think he'd know that much about me, wouldn't you? Well, perhaps he does. Perhaps he just doesn't want you to think that he does. Well, I'm part of a generation that had next to nothing, you see. I've fallen a few sweets at Christmas before lucky. Never knew where the next pair of shoes were coming from. And I've seen my mum slip food off a plate onto my dad's when he wasn't looking, because there was never enough to go round. The good old days, they call them now, don't they? I can't think why. You've just said why. I'd, oh, I wondered when you'd be putting your tooth pen with him. Is he always this quiet? I can't think what I said that got you started, but you're very welcome. I'll go and have a look round upstairs. Shall 
She reminds me of your mother in a way. Yeah. I know what you mean. I envy them somehow. What, their experience of deprivation? You'd expect me to say yes to that, wouldn't you? You think I'm the kind of woman that believes that suffering ennobles you. Men believe it too, you know. But you think I believe it, don't you? Why should I? Well, I don't. Good. Great. Glad to hear it. Would you like a drink? No, I'm driving. Well, I'll go without and drive if you would like one. No, thanks. Oh, well, in that case... Hey, hey, do you know how much you've got there? Yes, a lot. Oh, well, you're not used to it, you know. Women who drink are more interesting, aren't they? Now, what makes you say that? Don't you find them more interesting? It's not something I've thought about. Oh, how long are we going to be here? I hope she's not going to take hours. I've got work to do before morning. I used to do my homework in this room. I worked damn hard as well, though there's nothing to show for it. I never passed anything. Oh, I won a prize for poetry reading once. Second prize it was. Sheila G, whose husband runs the garage in the village, she won first prize. Education's not just a question of passing things. No, I didn't say it was. But I've often thought that the reason that I can't enjoy music like you and Sarah can is because of the school orchestra. God, they were awful. And we never learnt anything in English lit that had the remotest thing to do with life as it was in the 50s. The only poem I can remember is the one I won the prize for. You've seen it at the W.I. Jerusalem by William Blake. They sing it at the Labour Party conference, don't they? Is it the TUC? Odd, isn't it? I mean, the women at the W.I. are all conservatives. Why do they sing the same song? Can't possibly mean the same thing to both of them. You're not listening to me, are you? Yes, I am. It's an interesting thought, as a matter of fact. Do you want a divorce? What? I said, do you want a divorce? How's that for an interesting thought? There's nothing else I want, but I'll take that clock. Uh, yes, I'll, uh, I'll bring it for you. <laughs> He'll laugh when he sees it's gone for all he's attached to it. I'll stay and finish my drink. Well, can't you leave it? I don't particularly want to come back this way. I've got that work to do, you know. Dad will run me home, or Ross, one of them. I want to stay anyway. I think that's a weed. I'm not sure about that one. Here's Mum. You better ask her. Oh, he's telling me which are the weeds. But I mean, he's not too sure about this one. Weed? Out with it. <clears throat> I think I'll take a walk through the woods. I'll call for you on my way back. Nice lad. I think so. Is this something that doesn't happen very much these days? Solitary walking at his age, or am I out of touch? He's in love. She went off to Canada with her parents a month ago. For good? Yes. Yes, for good. Ledston, 2697. No, he's not with us now. Who? Oh, yes. Yes, my father said you called. Oh, dear. I am sorry. Well, I can get a message to him. Well, I'm sorry about your mother. Yes, yes, I, I'll, I'll see to it right away. Will you stay here? If you want me to. Why should it depend on me? I don't think you're the sort of person who can live too long with a casual sort of thing like this. Like us. We're casual, are we? I'm casual because of my situation. That's what I am. Well, I've got used to. I'm not saying it's what I want to be. What would you want to be? 
As I was in the beginning, but with someone like you. What makes you think I'd fit your perfect world? Instinct tells me you would, that's all. Ah, you rely on your instincts, do you? More these days, I do. But often than not, I used to get things hopelessly wrong when I worked the men. It must have made a mess of your politics. Oh, it has. I was sure of myself in the old days. Knew where I was going, had it all worked out, I thought. I was an activist, a revolutionary. Had a bit of a reputation for being at the core. Troublemaker in their terms. Nowadays, the only time I'm sure of myself is when I'm with them, not with my own kind. Them? The establishment, the hard-faced men. Well, Max would rejuvenate your beliefs. He's hard as nails when it comes to his work. That's what I tell myself when I feel myself flagging, you know. That even if the end isn't achieved or achievable, I do have a function, a reason for being. To stop the bastards treading us down. You understand, you see. Ah, but I thought there were a fair amount of bastards on your side of the fence these days. I I had not deny it. And what can you do about them? What can you do that won't undermine the effectiveness of your opposition? So we're in for a proliferation of bastards, are we? I don't talk to people with my own convictions like this, you know. I go on chanting the creed. Well, you're safe with me. I don't have any convictions. Go on. Ah, got some calls to make, he said. Might be back later. I'll be off myself when I finish this. Dinner's in Tobin. And all the better for keeping. You'll think so too, do you? Me? I'm quoting you. I don't know why your Ruth puts up with it. Well, she won't have too much longer. Wedding bells? All right. Who's the lucky woman? Woman? Well, I thought you said you were getting wed. I'll give over. You'd be jealous if I did, would you? <laughs> she was in the other night with Ross Brassington on their way to eat at the goat. Just had the one. Ah, I had a time getting her off my hands. You'll notice the difference. On my own, you mean? Ready for it? No. Worry you? A bit. I work though, aren't you? Fills a lot of hours, work. That's what it's all about, is it? Filling hours. That's what it's about for you? I've got nobody to worry about like you have. Worries a good hour filler. Who worries? You do. How much longer do you have to go? Two years and a bit. What then? to grips with it when it comes. I wouldn't. I'd get to grips with it now. Things work out. With a bit of help. Or more than a bit in some cases. Well, it's worse off than me. Like Brassington, you mean? Brassington? Worse off than me? Here comes one of your worries. Uh, Pardon? Oh, uh, fine. I'll have to put another barrel on. Ring that bell if anyone comes in, unless they want bitter, in which case they'll have to wait. Just come from work? Hi. First part of them aborted now. Hi. No flag waving? No speeches? I didn't think much to your campaign. Well, I did nothing but get myself nominated. I didn't notice you whipping them into vote. I never do. They can like me or not me. I've always left it to that. They know me, it's up to them. Half of them wouldn't know you were standing. What kept you quiet? Well, I uh, didn't want to make it any more of an issue between us than it was. Uh, not in the marketplace. Oh, I thought it was happening something like that. You don't win in politics by respecting other people's feelings, you know, not as it's played these days. You can uh, have a sup of my pants if you're gasping. Bill Summers is chasing me for Dad's decision on whether he's going to head the development team. You mean ostensibly head it? I don't mind taking a back seat in the circumstances. You know I don't. Dad'll knock it. He'll see it as charity. Charity between father and son. Charity is charity to dad, wherever it comes from. I'd have thought there was a wider meaning to the word. 
has been demeaned by the parasites, the takers, the do-gooders. The givers, too, maybe. The people who want to be seen to be doing good want their halos to shine. The reasonable people who want a badge to proclaim their virtue. You put me in that category, I suppose. You're getting paranoid, Ross. It's a sickness we can't afford. United we stand, divided we fall. <laughs> Even the slogans seem to be changing hands. If Summers wants Dad's decision, why doesn't he chase him up himself? I seem to have taken on the role of mediator and made a cock-up of it. Oh, Dad. I would have rung the bell if I'd known there was a conference going on. What are you doing about eating tonight? I'm out with Ruth. Ah, that's what I thought you told me. I told Annie not to bother. What about you? Oh, I shan't starve. <laughs> Sarah at home. She's gone walking with Guy. It's time I was walking, too. Oh, have you got any spare keys to the house? I seem to have lost mine. Your mother was always losing hers. There's a box full of them in the pantry. Not that that would do you much good. Here, yeah, you better take mine. And leave it under the stone by the front door. I don't fancy being locked out of my own house. You'll be wanting to know what I'm going to do about this development job? Yes, well, Bill's getting a bit anxious. Shut, Bill! If I could be sure of living a useful life without time on my hands, Bill Summers could go and jump in the river. I'm thinking of me, not Bill, or the company, or you even. Yes, well, you should. I should. I should. I bloody well should. And I am. I'll let you know tomorrow. I'll get off, then. What are you looking at me like that for? Maybe you think you never heard me give me a rag up before. I can understand it. Oh, you can understand it, eh? I said that to give you a chance to prove I don't understand it. Humoring me? Well, you'd better not. I'm not in the mood for it. Sarah said you came to see me last night. I wonder what gave her that idea. That's what she said. She can read me between the lines. Like your mother could, can say. <laughs> She's very like your mother, do you know that? Yes. Yes, he says. Now you've given way on Guy, I suppose you think that your contribution paid up. That home's to be a place where you sleep and eat now and then while you sit in my old office playing the king. Guy's gone against me. Avoids me as much as he can. Very well then, let him, if that's what he wants. They've got each other. Well, who else should they turn to but each other if neither of them can turn to you? I'm here. I'm available. Aye, on your own terms, though. Hey, hey. You can't come back from a lonely job to a lonely house, Max. It's a dog's life. Oh, I know you think I'm preaching at you. And I know why you're letting me in all. Because you're mother and because I'm... Facing a time of empty days. There needn't be empty days. There's a job with Ross on the new development. I don't want the new development. It'll destroy the valley. Ah, oh, Dad, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Aye, the uh, Industrial Revolution was a bit of a bloody exaggeration. When it started, look what it did to the side of the hill. How many generations have lived with it? It's too late to go back. There's no option but to go on. If you're involved, it'll do less damage than if you're not. And since it's inevitable, you might as well be involved. Who says it's inevitable? National need demands it, and you know what that means. And why do they need me to smooth their path for them? There'll be the usual objections, delaying tactics, hold-ups. To hold back the inevitable, what national need demands? We'll go on eating till we get to the last apple on the tree, and what'll be the answer to <coughs> national needs then, eh? Eh? Oh, it's all going into one ear and out the other, isn't it? No, I'm listening. You can't conceive that life can throw up problems to which there's no answer. Yes, I can. I've listened to you more than you know. some things I don't like to admit, but they register. Like the night Mum died. We've been talking about you. I told her I thought you were insensitive. No, let me finish. She laid into me, really laid into me. She flayed me. She thought the sun shone out of you. But it wasn't just that. It was you standing there in that room where she lay dying. Never had as much respect for you as I had then. Never been more aware of how much I'd undervalued you. Let it all go in one ear and out the other, you said just now, but it didn't altogether. Some of it got caught up here. 
There's more of you and me than you know. Dad? I don't think you'll be ashamed of how I manage things. Seems we've been at cross purposes, Donna. When do you want this back? You're reading it yourself, aren't you? Rereading it. I'll probably get through it tonight. You can have it tomorrow if you like. You might find it pretty hard going. Here's Guy. Tomorrow, then? Yes, probably. I do hope I'm not interrupting anything, but there's been a phone call for you. What do you want a big house like that for? You don't approve? Well, I could understand it if you were going to put up for labour like you said you were that time, you know, that time when you were out of friends with your dad. They all have big houses, the labour men, don't they? I don't want it because it's big. I want it because I was happy there when we were kids. Uh, childhood's a thing of the past. Of course it is grand for us. No, oh, we didn't have the world to contend with like they do. See? A street was our world. Beyond that, God and the devil. You think that was good? It worked. Yours doesn't. It will, give them time. Well, they're them pessimists, are you? No, you've got it the wrong way round. We didn't correct as elders, neither. <clears throat> I bet you did your share of sinning down in that place, didn't you? What place? London, city of sin. You lived with a woman, didn't you? Over the brush, we used to call it in my day. Not many did, because they feared of what might happen to them when the Day of Judgment was at hand. You don't believe all that rubbish, Gran. Don't I? How do you know what I believe? Oh, I've left you a bit in my will, by the way. Don't be morbid. You'll outlive us all. I'm out at that. Anyway, as I say, it's only a bit. So don't be overdoing the gratitude. No, oh, sorry. Thanks. You're welcome. Are you sure Ruth said she was coming here? She's gone with the message. And you're to wait here, she said. Impatient, are you? It's good to be back. Well, she'll not want to live in the past, you know. When women wait till her age to get married, they can wear men out. I beg your pardon, Gran. Granted. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot you were here. I've finished. Sorry you missed your music. I'd better finish my homework, I think. Does he still wish he wasn't doing maths and physics? I think he might have changed if it hadn't come too late. 
going to be a bit of a struggle changing schools in the middle of it all, but he'll manage. He's got guts. Yes, I know. Oh, when did you realize that? Well, the second time he ran off from the school, I suppose. In spite of the wrath he knew was to come. Meaning you? <laughs> yes, meaning me. Suppose I hadn't been there, the prospect of facing me on the Day of Judgment. Suppose all he'd had to do was to come home and say, sorry, I can't stick it. How easy that would have been. Should I encourage him to believe that life is easy when I will know it isn't? No, of course not. I do have a function, you know. And me? What's my lesson for the day, Max? No, I'll get a lift or something. But I promise I'll be with you before the night is out. Aye, we'll come back here. Just hang on till I get there, huh? Before the night's out, I promise. All right? All right, now. She doesn't want to stay there. We can get her now. How are you going to get there? Well, if I can get to the motorway, I can get a lift. I could be there in a couple of hours. What is it? My wife left my daughter with her grandparents. It sounds as if they're giving her a bad time. You couldn't give me a lift to the motorway, could you? I'm sorry about your trouble. I've got problems, too. My father hasn't the slightest doubt that he's won this ballot at the works today. What odds would you give? My daughter's waiting I for me. I hear that Les played it down. He didn't push himself. Now, Les is fond of Dad, but not to the extent that he'd be prepared to lose. And anyway, he likes the limelight, the dramatic. The left depends on me listening to this, The end it? justifies the means for you, doesn't it? Even to the extent of somebody else's pain. Why not your own? What am I supposed to have done? Les isn't clever enough to realise that by playing it down like that, the men aren't going to see that there's a threat to Dad. And so there's going to be the usual low pole, except for people like you, the incomers. And you'll have made sure they use their boats, won't you? What are you asking me to do? Leave us alone. I don't like intimidation. You don't mind handing it out, though, do you? The car's round the back. I shall want it in the morning for school. Oh, we're ridiculous people like me. We have the intelligence to see what's going on, and yet we turn a blind eye. Almost as if we wanted to destroy ourselves. We're short on everything except indignation. Get out of here. Now, go and get this. Get this down you. What is it? Never mind what it is. Get it down you. I used to be an expert on hangovers in my time. <laughs> well, you've been sick, I see. Oh, I'm disgusting. Aye, it's disgusting. It's not funny, Dad. <laughs> it's something I never thought I'd see. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Who says you've got to be sorry for behaving like a natural human being? It's not natural. It's disgusting. Well, you better spoil it if you say that again. Spoil what? Never mind. Now, you're going to get that down, you I'm not going to force it down, you. Come on. Yeah. It's awful. <laughs> yeah, well, treat it as your penance if it's in your nature to need one. Don't you want to know why? Why what? Why I did it. No, no, no. Just lie back. You can tell me later. Lie back and let it work. Don't go away. No, I won't go.
I forgot one You say you let him use your car. Why, if you feel so strongly against him? Humanistic reasons. He's gone to fetch his daughter. He seems a very decent sort of bloke to me. Mm. A real Christian, aren't you, Ross? Love thine enemy. Who says he's my enemy? I do. In what respect? He's a Marxist. It's a free country, if that's what he believes. Mm. Would he be as tolerant of your freedom to think differently if his lot were in power? That's a hypothetical question, isn't it? Today it is. What about tomorrow? We know who the wild man of the works is. It's your brother's mate, Reg Brooks. No following at all worth speaking of. It's a bit of a joke, really, isn't he? He couldn't get Les to stand against Dad. This one did. If Les wins that count tomorrow, he'd have Ian McKellar to thank. Jim can't expect to be works convener forever, you know. I'm not saying Les is the ideal replacement, but he's not exactly a raving militant, is he? What's that expression you use? A front man? For McKellar? You're like Max. He's convinced there's a communist plant in the works. Supposing he's right. The union's democratic. The majority wouldn't tolerate the it. The majority don't vote. I'll accept that. But I still think you're wrong. Oh, Ross. You see the world as you'd like it to be, don't you? You're corrupted by trust and respect. I'm part of that picture, aren't I? We've all got to live up to your idea of us. You've a very odd way of putting things. Or perhaps you're right. Seems I'm in good company anyway. If Jim loses the vote tomorrow, it'll be because he trusted too much. Dad! Good heavens, he's not a bit like that. That's what I don't understand. To let himself be outmaneuvered in this way. It's not like him at all. I don't think we'll need to send anybody else. I think we're chasing a red herring from what I heard today. I'll put it in the report. Who was he with? Les Turner or Brooks? Woman again. I've left everything back at the digs. I'll drop it all at your office in the morning. I must get back. To 